from Barangaroo Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Hello, we made it to Friday and of course we touched records today on the local market. What a great session, a very different story over in Japan where you've got the Nikkei down about 2.5%. Welcome to the COB, I'm Juliette Sali. Um, just having a quick look at where we are seeing the ASX 200 now. It is up by about eight tenths of 1% as we head into the match off at 7,954 points. So off some of the earlier highs, but still getting very close to 8,000. Um, the All Ordinaries Index up eight tenths of 1%, 8,200. I was talking to Shane Oliver earlier. They have actually upgraded their forecasts for where they see um, the market ending the year. So there is a lot of scrambling and repricing going on. And that was similar to what we'd seen on Wall Street overnight, particularly as you saw a seller out of those big mega cap tech stocks on that cooling inflation picture, a rotation into small caps. Is that what we're going to see here? And um, it's quite interesting to see, particularly in the gold space, how a lot of those smaller players are doing incredibly well. Northern Star, though, also up by about 4%. So just getting to the themes, of course, uh, record high, although worth noting, we're just double checking because, of course, the market hasn't shut yet officially. Uh, but it looks like we have um, potentially come off those highs. But the uh, one of the indexes I'm hearing is a record high. We will get a confirmation on which one that is in a moment. But in terms of a lot of the momentum that we have been seeing from these gains in the market, it's also due to the fact that you saw CBA continuing to hit these records. I mean, despite the fact so many people say CBA is overpriced, it once again hit a record $131.60 with a $221 billion market value. Now, BHP has a market cap of $220 billion. And uh, yenflation, if you will, because we saw that big spike coming through in the yen, sparking calls, of course, that there had been currency intervention. Uh, as I mentioned, we are seeing the Nikkei lower. They always move inversely to each other. When the yen goes up, Tokyo stocks go down. All right, let's have a quick look at what we're seeing in terms of those banking players, particularly where CBA is trading. As I mentioned, it has been the key story of the day, that rise and rise. Um, just off those records, it looks like on the close, but $131.43, still a gain of 1.5%. When it comes to the mining stocks today, having a look at where we are seeing those players, uh, if we can flip the board, I think BHP we mentioned was under a little bit of pressure. Uh, down four tenths of 1%, $43.36. Rio Tinto there, pretty flat. The iron ore players looking quite good. A quick look as well at some of the retail players today. All looking pretty positive. La Visa, Premier Investments, Harvey Norman, JB Hi-Fi, West Farmers, all ending higher. All right, well, we mentioned shares in CBA hitting a record. That's a $221 billion market value. BHP coming off, it says it will shut its nickel operations in Western Australia. Rio Tinto there um, tracking as well. City suggesting it could look at a deal for Arcadium Lithium. NAB shares hitting their highest since the GFC. At one point, they were at $36.89. And shares in regional airline Rex, about eight tenths of 1% lower, it revealed it's facing a boardroom split. Let's make sense of all the market action. Henry Jennings from Marcus Today joins us. CBA finally trumping BHP. <laughs> Yeah, good afternoon, Julia. Yes, CBA finally trumping BHP. I've got to say, you know, it's it's quite a day for the banking sector. Again, they're pushing up, and this really has been the the, the major propulsion for the ASX 200 over the last month or so. So, uh, interesting to see that uh, CBA now bigger than BHP. That is quite momentous, I guess. Of course, uh, BHP probably suffering a little bit because of that uh, nickel news yesterday, and of course, also in the background that uh, takeover. Uh, that we saw a little while ago for Anglo probably weighing on it as well, together with the iron ore price, although that did rally a little bit. So I, I suspect we are seeing, you know, in this banking sector, the bigger the sector gets in terms of uh, its representation in the ASX 200, the more money that kind of drags in from the passive index funds and, and they are forced to buy by the banks. Uh, and we have seen, uh, I think Jardins were out this morning with some uh, research suggesting that Retail investors have actually been taking profits in the banking sector and it is actually institutions that have taken up the mantle in the banking sector. And I suspect some of that, as I say, is to do with passive, passive ETFs.
Yeah, I read that article too. Very interesting, mum and dad investors dumping the banks, but obviously somebody is buying them because we've been talking about the rise and rise of these stocks. Yeah. Um, also focused though on the gold miners. I mean, I'm looking at some of the small ones, Degray and the likes, but Newmont looking good too. What, what's, what are we seeing there? Well, I guess uh, it was inevitable that we saw the gold price perk up on the back of the US dollar coming under pressure following that CPI number. Uh, in Aussie dollar terms, the gold price is around 35.58. Uh, so three and a half thousand and fifty eight dollars. So it's pretty elevated gold price. So things are looking pretty good for the sector. Uh, the big ones, as always, attract uh, a lot of the uh, the attention. Northern Star up four point four percent on today. So it's, uh, I guess, a question of where they go from here. But they've certainly been on a bit of a, uh, a huge run, although evolution still lagging a little bit. We had a bit of a sell on evolution. Uh, before I went away in terms of uh, the copper exposure because they are 33 odd percent in copper uh, and I was a little bit uh, bearish on evolution around four bucks they're up around 2.9 percent today so they are pushing back up towards that four dollar level De Grey has been under some pressure uh, as you say had it's had a good run today but it has been under pressure following that uh, big big capital raise uh, to get the Hemi project uh, underway and fully funded so uh, they're they're kind of a mixed bag really in terms of performance but certainly you know when we see bullion at these kind of levels uh, the big ones do do very well and that's certainly something we have seen the big story overnight henry was the rotation from the big mega caps into small caps particularly that momentum yeah. in russell 2000 i note the small lords here in australia up by 1.3 percent do you think that's going to happen here too well, it is July, uh, let's face it, Juliet, and we did see a lot of uh, end of year tax loss selling, especially in the small cap end of the market. And some of the stocks today, like Satire, uh, which I actually uh, started looking at this morning, uh, was up 13, 14 percent at one stage today. So retailers generally have done well, but we had seen that tax loss selling for the end of year really draining any enthusiasm out of the sector. And it's only taken a couple of weeks and a good night on that uh, Russell 2000 to put a bit of vim back in their step. So uh, long may it continue, I guess, but uh, some of these things have got a long way to come back. But uh, certainly we are seeing some signs of recovery in those small caps, which is good to see. And as you say, interestingly, last night, that Russell 2000 went completely the opposite direction, big time compared to the Nasdaq, which was to some extent weighed down by that news from Tesla in terms of the autonomous taxi. Uh, big, uh, big news announcement being sort of a pushback from August, I think, to October. And a lot of the market uh, rally in Tesla has been predicated on that being a positive announcement in August. So uh, they were down eight and a half percent last night. So that did weigh on the Nasdaq and really doesn't uh, reflect, I guess, the entire index. So as we're at or near records, where, where do markets go from here, Henry? Where indeed? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you know, here we are, we're close to 8,000. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe, isn't it? I've, I've been away for a few weeks. Uh, and when I left, the market was very much in a trading range, 7,700 to 7,900. Uh, here we are at 79.54. I suspect we do need to consolidate a little bit. The, the banking index well i have a, a sort of a big bank basket which is just an accumulation or a, an addition of the four big bank share prices and that's trading at over 225 dollars it started out as a hundred bucks some years ago when you could buy all four banks for a hundred dollars no dividends taken into account but only back in april that big bank basket was the same price as the three uh, big iron ore producers the three amigos as i call them so uh, there has been a massive divergence since then. Banks really going nuts, uh, which, you know, it's hard to believe given the tepid economy we have. But, you know, I guess Australian housing, they are big building societies, etc. And the weight of money is behind them. But I wouldn't be surprised to see sector rotation continue uh, to now play out in our market and some maybe some profit taking occur in the banks and maybe some judicious stock picking in the resource sector and maybe some consolidation around this sort of 17 uh, 79.50 level before we push maybe to 8,000 as we head towards reporting season. But there are a few things on the horizon. We've got Jackson Hole. That's going to be something to look forward to as well at the end of August. That's one of the big uh, events, I guess, lined up ahead of a uh, Federal Reserve rate cut in September. Yeah, well, speaking of what we're watching from the Fed, your thoughts to Henry on what we heard from Jay Powell this week. I mean, obviously inflation cooling, but it does seem that he thinks that they've got a handle on the overheated economy or it's coming off that overheat, overheatedness then. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it is. We're certainly seeing some data suggesting that, and it is data dependent. Don't forget that inflation is is not falling; it is just less than it was. Uh, so it is still rising. It's just not rising as much as it has been. Um, I was away recently and was talking to a number of friends from the U.S. and they were saying how expensive everything has got in the U.S. Very, very expensive in terms of the cost of living. Uh, certainly something that I saw in the U.K., which has got very expensive as well. And these inflation numbers, although they're coming in below estimates, it's important to, to remember, I guess, that inflation is still rising, even if it is rising less than the analysts were uh, predicting. So it still hurts. And you've got to remember that it's rising on a higher base. So, uh, you know, prices having pushed up quite considerably uh, are now slowing, but they're still pushing up. So, you know, the race and the battle against inflation is not yet won, but uh, certainly looks as if Powell and his buddies will cut rates in September. Uh, at least it will be a sign that uh, that uh, things are on track to, uh, to have vanquished inflation or at least uh, got it under control, which is, I guess, the main thing. All right. Well, welcome back from your holidays and great to have you on. Such a momentous day, Henry. It is. It, it is, is, isn't it? Yeah, really Champagne exciting day. For. Yeah. It's great. It's great. I wish I was long CBA. <laughs> All right. Have a good weekend, Henry. Thank you. Thank Henry. You. Jennings from Marcus today. Yeah, incredible. CBA now overtaking BHP as Australia's most valuable company. But the stock of the day was BHP. Following the company's announcement, its nickel activities would leave Western Australia. Both our guests seem to agree. Let's hear what Jonathan Takadina and June Bay Lu had to say. Um, it was quite a large shutdown, but 450 million loss uh, versus uh, you know, its annual uh, revenue. Uh, you can see that market initially sold it off and it's bought it back higher. We're still at the bottom end of the range, um, and I do think that uh, you know, it's, still a, it's still a great company. It is the leader uh, in the space, so I still maintain that buy that I had last week. So use this opportunity to top up. They do have the uh, options on it, so you know, there should be some volatility and sell some puts on it. I absolutely agree uh, with BHP call. Um, it is a strong, uh, well, a strong buy. Um, it's uh, it, uh, sh we always want to see miner to be rational. Um, so when times the prices just doesn't justify the operations, um, it is to cut it, and it definitely shows the capital discipline. Um, and I actually think that's the right thing to do given where the nickel prices. Um, and um, you know, gone are days where we saw those flying prices from a couple of years ago when you know where IGO bought out the western areas, um, and uh, these days aren't likely to return. All right, well, at or near records, but we're going to keep you in suspense with what the market leaders were and get to the laggards first. Kicking it off with computer share, which was down about 4%. Wise Tech Global also weaker by 3.7%. Of course, there was that switch out of tech stocks globally into small caps, as we've been seeing. I mentioned the Small Ordinaries Index up over 1.3% today. Also a bit of weakness coming through from Illumina, Ordinate and QBE Insurance. Let's see if we've got some of the market leaders there. If not, I can bring up my ASX 200 and tell you what they were. We saw in terms of the top movers today, uh, Domain Holdings up by 6%, Charter Hall up 6%, James Hardy up 55 Genesis Minerals up 5 and GPT Group up 5%. But of course, the big story of the day that we cannot forget is the fact that CBA is now Australia's most valuable company, overtaking BHP with a market cap of $221 billion. BHP has $220 billion market cap. Okay, let's have a look at what we're gonna see in terms of, or well, there's a quick look at the small cap leaders and laggards as well. Immutep up 20%. MedAdvisor up 11.6 and um, if we have a look at the laggards as well, Legacy Iron Ore, Titomic Cash Converters, Red Hill Minerals and Australian Vanadium. So tonight, um, we actually got that inflation figure yesterday, but we're going to get producer prices month on month. Also the US University of Michigan sentiment survey and French final CPI month on month just after their elections as well. Let's have a look at what we've got a week ahead. It's all going to be about that June um, unemployment data coming through 
on Thursday. We've also got the ECB policy decision, UK kicking it off with June CPI and PPI, the US Empire Manufacturing Index for July, and a number of quarterly reports, including Rio, BHP, which will be interesting after the suspension of its nickel operations in WA. Newmont, I was talking about that stock with Thomas Atkinson from FX Evolution. He says it is on a breakout at the moment. Santos, Whitehaven Coal, Evolution Mining and Hub24. And we are going to be, I believe, speaking to the Hub24 CEO next week. All right, let's just give you a quick look on where we are seeing markets. Um, the ASX 200 closing higher by 8 tenths of 1%, 7,959, a new 100 day high. This has been really quite extraordinary to see these records being touched, particularly in the intraday session. As uh, Henry mentioned, we're getting very, very close to 8,000 points there on the ASX 200. And this is really as we're starting to see a lot of buying coming through in the banks, CBA uh, really hitting another record high, $131.60 at one point and also gold topping 2400 really helping a lot of those gold miners so a very momentous day on the Australian market we will be watching overseas markets uh, tonight and bring you all the reaction and what we can expect for another trading week next week we'll see you from 9 45 a.m. Eastern on Monday